Hello there again, everyone, and thank you for checking out my latest review. Uh, excuse this wire, it's kind of in the way, but I'm trying to work with the wireless mic to uh, increase the acoustics in this, this great room out here that I do the reviews from. Today, I wanted to focus on one spirit, one spirit alone, and that spirit being Knob Creek Smoked Maple Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Small batch, patently proof. Or patently crafted, ninety proof. There she is. Um, as we discussed when he, uh, when I reviewed the Willet and the um, Buffalo Trace uh, over the last really decade, but I would say five or seven years specifically, there's been there's been what I call the bourbon boom that's taken place, and this is really a, a, a giant player in that boom is this Knob Creek. Um, Knob Creek is actually a, a small boutique-like uh, bourbon that uh, the Bean Company uh, owns. And if you read the news and if you keep up on the spirit world, I'm not talking about Supernatural, the liquor world, you, uh, you probably read that uh, this week uh, Bean was actually purchased by a Japanese company. The name, quite frankly, I can't pronounce it, so I won't try. Point being, uh, Bean, who owns Maker's Mark, um, this Canadian club, um, several high-end spirits, several well-known spirits that you know of, uh, if not drink, is now a, is now a Japanese-owned company. Eh. To me, it's kind of a bummer. Bourbon is, as I've reviewed before in the past, bourbon is an American spirit. It's the spirit of the United States. To have it owned by a Japanese company, to me, is kind of a damper, but it is what it is. Again, Knob Creek owned by Beam. Um, other, you know, kind of these, like I said, these, bur these boutique bourbons that you see. Um, Bullet, uh, B-U-L-L-E-I-T, -I, I pronounce it Bullet, I don't even know if that's right. Uh, they're actually owned by Diageo, who's another multinational conglomerate who owns Crown Royal that we've discussed several times. Um, Buffalo Trace, you see a lot of makers, you see a lot of, those are kind of, you go in and you order a, you know, a bourbon on the rocks at a, at a hotel, you're going to get something like this. But the cool thing about this one, I thought it, it is um, um, smoked maple flavor. I'm not a big flavoring guy into, um, into whiskeys. To me, the cool thing about whiskey is they impart their own aromas and their own flavors, and they're picking up these very natural um, flavors from the oaks and the, and the, and the woods and the, the smokiness and they're, they're so cool they all have their own personality well see i think when you start infusing too much flavors i mean you're you're, you're producing in essence a liqueur um now not to say i don't enjoy some of them maple specifically i know uh jim bean makes one um i know crown makes one and i've tried both of those haven't been a fan uh the christmas uh cleveland christmas bourbon is a flavored one um, it's not a, a maple flavored one, but that's a really nice one. So I'm not going to completely judge this um, right off the top, but just telling you uh, my, my initial thoughts. Uh, also, one thing I did also want to touch on today was uh, glasses. You know, what, what do you choose when you're, when you're going to choose a, a glass to drink bourbon or, or whiskey or, or vodka or anything? And I kind of want to start it with, I wanted to start with the least intense uh, in terms of the aroma and the palate, moving on to, you know, kind of the very focused flavor. This is actually an Appleton's rum glass. And as you can see, it's shaped, you know, very V-shaped. And um, so, at the same time, it does have a nice little heavy uh, base to it. So it's going to be nice and firm, so it's like easy to tip over, maybe like one of your, you know, your Glen Cairns are, or this wine glass we'll discuss in a second. But to me, if you're going to drink something high-end, you're going to drink it neat, it's probably not the best option because it's diffusing all the flavors and, and aromas and even they're not as visually visually appealing even out of these but uh, really nice for stuff on the rocks and mixers uh, moving up you have your traditional highball again nice firm base um, this one doesn't flare out it's just flare straight up it's more cylindric in, in its shape um, again I prefer this for a cocktail um, however most places that you go if you order something neat You'll get it in something like this. Not bad, but definitely not the best thing you can do. 
Um, this is actually just a wine glass that I actually really like and I'm actually going to use today when we do this bourbon. It's kind of, um, uh, you know, it, it's, very, it's very mellow and understated, but it does slightly filter and, and focus that aroma and those, and those smells right up to your nose, but it's not what the Glencairn is, which is kind of an extreme version of that, where it really chokes up at the top and makes you, you know, really, really get that strong. This is a really cool base, but when you're drinking bourbon, to me, that's a little uh, nouveau riche. It's a little bit like, all right, dude, it's bourbon. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to make it more than it is. Love bourbon, good spirit, but this is more of a whiskey or cognac or brandy uh, uh, glass, in my opinion. All right, as we always do, let's talk about the label and the, and the bottle on this one. I really like it. I think it's cool. Not too much. Not too, uh, not too little. Kind of has that backwoods moonshiner feel. Uh, they are notorious for their uh, their wax. There's a there's a wood cork underneath here, so they kind of that maker's mark wax. And to me, I just look at this label and I just want to tear it off. It's one thing I like about Knob Creek. I just want to just makes you want to bust into it, which is what I'm going to do now. Again, we've discussed this several times, but I think it's very uh, very genuine and much more sincere um, when I review a whiskey or a bourbon that I do so for the first time with you guys. So you get my kind of my actual real-time reaction to it. So you get lucky enough to see that again. Let's break the seal on this guy. Drop the top. And here we go. Little artificial cork. Small little drink there. And there you are. Okay, this one I'm gonna let breathe a little bit because of uh, the maple aroma. I think it's kind of important that we that we do that. We let it swim around, get some air. Very, very beautiful colors right off the top. Um, man, I tell you what, that's almost giving me like a it's much more brilliant in this glass than it is in, in, the, in the bottle. It almost looks like if you were to take gold and melt it down to whatever the melting point is for gold, that, that's what this looks like. I mean, it looks like liquid gold. That's really cool. Really beautiful. Okay. I think that one's swam around enough. On the nose, it's... Um, I tell you what, it's it's better already than, than the other maple flavor products I've had. It's not like bam, like you're smelling Aunt Jemima's butt, <laughs> or you're not smelling uh, log cat. It's still bourbon. Uh, matter of fact, you can barely barely pick up just the dash of the maple, which is a good thing. I wanted to complement the bourbon, not to be the focal point. Here we go. Sorry about the delayed reaction here. I gotta say, number one is very good. Number two, it is has multiple personality disorder. It can't really decide what it wants to be, but I think it's a good thing. Um, I was going to say mellow, but as I sat there and let it linger, that's not accurate. Um, I think it's mellow at first. I think you then get the maple. You then get this incredible warmth that you get with bourbons. Then you almost get like a cognac, like a, like a fruity, grapey aftertaste in the mouth. I'm gonna give that one last shot. Yeah, see, that time I got the maple right off the top. 
a little bit more so than they did the first sip. I tell you what, that's uh, I really, really enjoy that. That's gonna go right up there with with some of my favorite bourbons. Um, I'm a sweet tooth guy. I, I, I like sweets, like I said. However, I don't like um, when spirit companies try to impart unnatural flavors into natural spirits. But they did this beautifully. Um, a grade, I'm gonna give that an eight and a half. Very, very good. Um, price point, by the way, I think I picked this up at right around 40 bucks. Um, very good, very smooth. It's like the best elements of maple without the artificial, like I said, syrup bottle aggressiveness and overwhelming that you get in some of the other versions of maple. Absolutely delicious. Hope you enjoyed my uh, the mentions on, on the different types of glasses and what my choices are. Uh, until next time, everyone. And again, thank you, Knob Creek Maple. That was delicious. Glasses up, and we'll see you soon.